live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. First tonight, the federal campaign trail has hit Tasmania again as the major parties toured Bass and Lyons. The government and opposition outspruking funding for early education and young people as part of their pre-election pitch to voters. It's early education centres like Playgroup in the seat of Bass that Labor says could be made more inclusive under its $50,000 election pledge. That will support those children who are struggling with that transition to just have some time out to be calm and then help them to transition um, home. The federal opposition is advocating for cheaper childcare after prices jumped 6% nationally in the last year. Families are paying significantly more out-of-pocket costs uh, as a result just to go to work. In Lyons, the Morrison government is promising to get more tradies on the tools through an extension of the Job Trainer Fund and encourage more employers to hire young Tasmanians. The federal government is, is providing a wage subsidy of 50% to employers to encourage apprentices to come on site. In New Norfolk, where youth unemployment rates are some of the highest in the country, demand for apprenticeships is through the roof. I'm sure other employers would probably find the same, that you probably get 15 or 20 applications for a, as a minimum for an apprenticeship in the construction trades. Tasmania's unemployment rate currently sits at 3.8 per cent. Experts say young people are still facing many barriers to employment and the pandemic has made it even harder to form industry connections in an already competitive market. What young people are telling us is that they really don't have a chance when they're up against members of the community that do have that experience. Um, and so it is a significant challenge for young people to enter the workforce at times. The Tasmanian government funded $850,000 in the current budget for youth navigators to help more year 12 leavers land a job post the pandemic. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. A lifting of the mask mandate in Tasmania has seen pubs and clubs benefit from an influx in patrons over the long weekend. But there's growing concern in our schools where face coverings remain compulsory about the continual spread of COVID and the vaccination rate. It's been a bumper few days of trade for the Hobart pub scene. We had some very, very solid trade over the last three days, so it's clear that the lifting of the masks has had a great effect on the hospitality industry in general. As his latest establishment prepares for opening day, the easing of mask restrictions couldn't have been better timed for businessman Ian Vaughan. That's right, perfect timing. It was just uh, something had to go right eventually, I guess, given all the delays and the challenges that we've had to face over the last couple of, year, couple of years. While regulations dwindle across the community, in Tasmanian classrooms, COVID transmission remains high, battling against low vaccination rates for 5 to 11-year-olds. Parents may still think, well, you know, my child's not at risk. It, um, I don't want to have them jabbed until I've seen, you know, more evidence. But the thing is, this vaccine has been in use in larger countries. The opposition renewing calls to make the jab more accessible. They could be offering vaccinations in pharmacies, which would reach into regional areas and provide greater access to parents who want to access that service. Primary and secondary school children currently make up a majority of Tasmania's daily COVID caseload. That's despite masks still being mandatory on campus for staff and some students. We do have to remember that apart from the ACT, we are the state with the highest rate of vaccination for five to 11 year olds in the country. So. It's, um, so the stats are improving each week that goes by. The time ticking as we approach the added pressure of flu season. It's really important that the government pulls out all stops as we head into winter to give every child the opportunity to be vaccinated. Get those vaccines in, get them in early and that way the child and yourself have the opportunity to build up the immunity through the vaccination. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. Calls are ramping up to encourage more Tasmanians into the electric car market as fuel prices skyrocket. Independent MP Andrew Wilkie wants governments to actively encourage the uptake through subsidised registration and other incentives. That sentiment is being supported by the good car company which import new and used vehicles. The electric vehicles that we bring in start at $15,000. 
they're a shorter range electric vehicle, but most Australians only drive 40, 50 k's per day. This is exactly the time we should be having a conversation as a state and as a country about electric vehicles and fast-tracking the rollout of electric vehicles. It remains unclear what global oil supplies will soon look like as electric models like Tesla jack up their vehicle prices by thousands of dollars, with waiting lists ballooning out to nine months. Ex-Labor State President Ben McGregor has welcomed the end of a 12-month legal battle, clearing him of allegations he sexually harassed a colleague seven years ago. Mr McGregor stepped down as Labor's candidate in Clark after text messages were leaked during the 2021 election campaign. In a statement, Mr McGregor says the timing of the claims were politically motivated and now that court proceedings have cleared, he is looking forward to spending time with his family. Police will have a greater footprint in the Northern Midlands after unveiling a brand new station in Longford. It comes as a crackdown on dangerous driving, with Tasmania's fatalities up. A fortress unveiled. Longford's new state-of-the-art police station is now open. Uh, to work out of a modern police uh, building is a morale booster for our officers. They've helped design it so it makes a better work environment. It's great that we can be able to provide our current police officers and our new police officers with the best in modern uh, policing facilities. Coming with a $5 million price tag, it's 10 times the size of the previous station and will host 13 full-time officers. This is fantastic. This is a good stepping off stone for our members to work in the community. The size of the police force in the north has been increased by 50 officers, but the union says traffic patrol has taken a hit in the past few years. Officers in road and public order services have been diverted to monitor COVID compliance. And at the same time, fatalities are skyrocketing. Look, it's our view that there needs to be dedicated police officers in the traffic space. Uh, more people die on our roads than any other portfolio in policing. In 2020 and 21, 72 people died on the roads, higher than any two-year period since 2010. This year, nine lives have been lost already, triple the number at this time last year. And we are seeing it across the country where there has been an increase in serious and fatal crashes. But there also has been an increase in the number of drink drivers that we're catching. Good behaviours are forged early and the kids at East Tamer Primary are putting hooning in the bin. They um, took photos of us and they put them, them into stickers. Plastering wheelie bins in the area with some very good reasons to slow down. Because if they go too fast and someone's walking across the road, they could get run over. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania has the highest regional excretion rates of ketamine and capital city consumption of oxycodone and fentanyl in the country, according to the latest wastewater drug report. The National Monitoring Program found nicotine increased in capital cities but declined in regional areas between April and August last year. Methyl and fetamine consumption decreased in all sites. Tasmania also has the second highest consumption rate of alcohol, nicotine, MDMA and cannabis. A Tasmanian basketball club has been recognised for its commitment to inclusion and diversity, winning a prestigious national award. In just six years, the Glenorchy Basketball Association has grown to nearly a thousand members, with a focus on developing skills both on and off the court. Shooting for goal and the stars. The need for a safe and welcoming space, inspiring the formation of the Glenorchy Basketball Association back in 2016. So we don't care what you look like, what your gender is. What we care about is providing a safe spot. That passion and dedication recognised today. Glenorchy beating contenders from across Australia to be named Good Sports' National Club of the Year. It makes you feel special, obviously, but what it does is it, it shines a light that you know we're heading in the right direction. There's not two of us. There's... There's 30-odd committee members that, that are involved in this award. Inclusion at the heart of the association. Its social program partnering with LGBTQI plus and disability basketball clubs, while their Helping Hands program provides support for lower socioeconomic groups. Developing skills away from the court through their leadership initiatives just as important. They might learn to riff, they'll learn to coach, they learn to... Um, to, to 
volunteer basically their time and give to other people. They learn respect. Also securing $1,000 with the award, they're setting new goals for the years ahead. It opens up opportunities for us, so I dare say, um, yeah, this is not the end of us and we, we like to get bigger. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A Launceston program teaching migrant children and adult swimming skills is proving life-changing both in and out of the pool. The month-long intensive course has secured federal funding for another year, with the course also preparing to make a splash in the south. These girls could barely touch the water last year. Now, look at them. The Middle East migrants made the move to Australia six years ago and had never swum before. When I first practiced, I was like, I, with my knees, and I was like, how do I do it? And then I learned. Although they coming from Iran, all the families are coming from Afghanistan and they've never been exposed to water. So, and we are surrounded by water in Australia, so it's a really need for all these kids to know how to swim. Under the watchful eye of Olympian Peter Tonkin, they are undergoing a course to swim confidently, as well as learning what to do in distressing situations. Help! Using a noodle, like putting your hands up, like help, like that. Like throw some stuff at floats to bring them back. Look, I'm amazed how quickly they've picked it up. I mean, I, I, you know, you would expect they'd probably be a little bit scared of the water, but um, they took the water like ducks. <laughs> the lessons are a partnership between Royal Life Saving Tasmania, the Migrant Resource Centre and Scotch Oakburn College, with senior students helping the children glide through the course. So it's not really something that I knew myself that people lived in like Launceston that weren't comfortable with swimming. And I know last year they even had like adults in this program and stuff like that. So I think it's, it's been really eye-opening to see that there are people that need to learn these skills. The program will head to Hobart for the first time later this year. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmania News. Two of Supercar's brightest young drivers have switched the high-octane energy of the racetrack today, facing pressure from Tasmanian students. Thomas Randall and Jake Kostecki met with Ravenswood Heights Primary School, offering insight into life in the fast lane, while also tackling questions crafted by the students. With all the school kids here, you know, they, they probably don't get to see much of what we do, and I guess it's, it's great to show them. I started go-karting when I was roughly their age, and um, anyone can do it. Yeah, hopefully uh, they can take something from me today. Simmons Plains will host the supercars next weekend. Matthew Wade and Ben McDermott have been welcome inclusions to Tasmania's Sheffield Shield side, both posting half centuries. After losing two early wickets, the superstar pair combined for a 129 run partnership. Wade was dismissed for 61, while McDermott powered on but fell an agonising six runs short of three figures. The Tigers are five for 250 at stumps. Meanwhile, Tasmania's women's side has won its sixth game in a row, defeating New South Wales in Sydney last night. After skiddling the Blues for 198, the Tigers made a positive start with opener Rachel Priest scoring 84 from just 94 balls. Tasmania suffered a scare, losing 5 for 33 in a middle order collapse. The Tigers chasing down the target with four wickets to spare. It means they all but qualify for the one day final with one game to go. Once again, Bryce Cotton reminded us why he's the NBL's best, putting on a show at My State Bank Arena. Vic Law hit 39 points for the Wildcats against the Breakers to send the game into overtime. But it was the three-time MVP Cotton who proved Perth's hero, hitting the winning triple with 1.4 seconds left. Cotton finished with 32 points, Perth winning 104 to 102. Tasmania's Alex Peroni has picked up a new racing opportunity in Europe. He signed on for Euro Formula side DriveX for the competition's pre-season testing in Barcelona. Peroni raced in the United States last year in the Indy Light Series and has previously raced in Europe in the Formula 3 category. The event takes place tomorrow and Thursday. And a Northwest soccer star is poised to take her talents to the global stage as part of Australia's newest national team. Rachel Tolson will soon head interstate to train with the Para Matildas before jetting across the world for a major tournament. 
Representing your country is what every child dreams of. For Rachel Tolson, it could soon become a reality. I'm a bit nervous to go and play as the international, but it's very exciting. The Shearwater soccer star has been handpicked to feature as part of the first ever Para Matilda squad as they train towards an inaugural World Cup. It will mean a lot to the disabled people, I think. Being able to start a team for the females is um, quite amazing. Day-to-day -day life can be challenging for the 21-year-old who lives with cerebral palsy. Athletes with her condition, acquired brain injuries and symptoms of stroke are all part of the team. Her inspiration, the Pararoos. Her hero, like many other budding players. I like uh, Sam Kerr at the moment. Because. Rachel and our newest green and gold girls will hold their first camp in April, a month before the Cerebral Palsy World Cup in Spain. A dream that beckons to be ticked off, yet there's still one more ambitious lifelong goal. If we can go to the Olympics as well, that'd be amazing. Good evening. Hobart's 18 today was two below average. Launceston's 25, two above the long-term average. Burnie and Devonport scoring 23. Strawn 24, Smithton and Flinders Island 23 degrees. Low Heads and Helens and Friendly Beaches 22. King Island and Bushy Park 20. Mostly cloudy today with showers over the southeast, central and east. Little Swanport 14 millimetres to 3 p.m. On the big picture, a cloud band extends from southwest Queensland through the eastern states to our west. Moist onshore winds brought low-level cloud to the eastern seaboard, plenty over the top end too. Tomorrow, a northeasterly flow continues. A slow-moving trough, the only other major story there tomorrow. Winds east and nor'easterly, 15 to 25 knots, reaching 30 knots over the south and northwest. So we have a strong wind warning there. That's from Tasman Island up and around to Stanley. Forecast for tomorrow. Partly cloudy for Hobart, 24 the top, 25 for Jeeveston, partly cloudy for Bothwell and 24. Launceston a shower or two, 24 the maximum, 22 the high for Devonport, Cressy a shower or two and 24 degrees. Burnie, humid and showery, 21 the top, 26 for Strawn, a shower blowing in, a humid day for Curry, 24 the maximum. St Helens showers and 21, 22 for Swansea, or for a possible shower and 22 degrees. And yep, the uh, UV again at 7 and high. On Thursday, a humid day with showers touching most parts, leaving Flinders Island alone though. An early shower over Strawn on Friday, otherwise fine and partly cloudy. And on Saturday, another partly cloudy day, temperatures holding into the 20s. A humid 32 in Adelaide tomorrow, humid and a possible shower for Melbourne, a shower or two and 26 in Sydney and a light shower forecast for Brisbane. Still cloudy around the state, Hobart currently 18 degrees, Launceston 22 and Devonport 20. That's the picture at the moment, Kim. Thank you very much, Murph, and that's about all we have time for tonight. Thanks for your company. For now, good night.